Oh. Well, I'm lost again, but at least I'm out in the open. Now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. Thankfully, I have some survival gear with me and it appears that I'm out on the lake, which means there's probably something to eat underneath this ice. But let me show you what I got to work with on this survival challenge. It's gonna be the lost fisherman. No food, no water, no shelter. Let's get surviving. You got an ax, that's gonna be crucial. But I wanna show you my fishing survival gear. This is something I carry around all the time. Uh, the hooks and sinkers and stuff I carry around all the time. The rest of the stuff is more like an ice fishing complete kit for me because I'm a pretty basic fisherman and I'm an even more basic survival fisherman. So of course we got line, this is six pound test line. You can catch almost any fish with six pound test line, you know, right up to pike. But if you're gonna catch a giant pike, you gotta make sure that you handle it properly. I've got bells. These are pretty cool because you can hang them up on a stick as an indicator. And then when you have a fish, that'll go off. I have three, three bells with me today, just like so. And all I'm carrying this is a little Ziploc bag. It fits in a pouch, very easy, very light to carry. I've got myself a Zippo, old Zippo container. These are really great carrying devices for all your things, a split shot. So we got little hooks. Little hooks will catch almost everything. I'd use a number four and I have a whole bunch of split shot of varying sizes. You want some small, some big. And that's pretty much all you need to do to catch a fish. Oh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. I also have some little flies here. That's in case you can't find bait. You can catch panfish. You'll have a harder time catching giant predatory fish on those little flies, but I'm not saying it's impossible. Something I've been carrying around this year is this uh, fire bait by Podski. The thing about this stuff is you can carry it everywhere. I don't think it has an expiration date on this stuff, so it pretty much lasts forever. And it's a dough and it smells like fish. <laughs> so I don't know what they put in this stuff, but it works awesome. You don't wanna be carrying around minnows in your pocket all winter, especially for survival. So that's it, that's all the gear we have. That's what's gonna provide our food, hopefully, if there's anything in this lake. And uh, right now, what we need to do is get to the ice. So you're probably not gonna be carrying an auger with you, but having an ax is something that's super, super practical, because you're gonna use that to uh, make fires, trim uh, brush for a shelter, and uh, it's a lot easier to carry than a spud or an auger, but the trick is you gotta be able to get through the ice and that's what I'm gonna show you right now. So we don't really know anything about this lake. We don't know where the fish are gonna be hanging out. My experience, most fish, they like to hang out right at that edge where things kind of change a little bit. They don't wanna be up too shallow usually and they don't wanna be too deep. Well, not every species. Every species is different. You got, you got some species that like to go up shallow, like trout, they, they'll go up into one foot six inches of water sometimes you can catch them, especially the winter, the summer not so much. Uh, lake trout, they're around 30 feet. And then you got uh, walleye, they're around 20 feet, between 15, 20, 10, 20 feet, something like that. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna come out too, too far here. We're gonna try sh uh, shallow for the active feeding fish. And then if we have to, we'll move out a little bit deeper. Let's get punching a hole so we can see if we can survive on this no food, no water, no shelter, the lost. Fisherman, survival challenge. Now it might seem really, really easy to get through the ice with an ax. And it is, it is, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, it is. Except when the ice gets to be about five feet. If you wanna cut a hole with an ax, you have to do short chops and you have to go around and around and around and around. Reason being, if you go straight down and you hit water, you're going to get really, really wet, which is really, really bad, especially if you're trying to survive. And the only reason you'd be going through the ice with an ax is probably in a survival situation because it makes a really bad way to get through the ice. A spud makes more sense because you can be up nice and high. And when you're going through, you're not going to get wet. An ax makes an awful splash when it hits the water. When you finally break through and that water starts rushing up, you've pretty much finished off your hole and you're out of the woods, out of the woods, out of the water, out of the waterworks. Now that we've got our hole, let's rig up and see if we can't get ourselves some lunch, dinner, 
breakfast. However long we are in the survival situation, we gotta plan ahead. It's got a little bit of dogwood here, and this will make a good, really good whippy fishing rod. Ice fishing is simple. Is this ice fishing now? Or is it still survival? It's probably a little bit of a mixture of the two at this point, but this will make a nice little whippy rod. And we can even put our bell on there. I don't know if I'll get all rigged up on this, but if nothing else, I can tie the fishing line to it and I can just let it sit there and let the dogwood do the work for me. Whippy. All right, we've got pretty much everything we need to get going here. All I'm gonna do is get Good length of line. See if we get to eat or not today. I hope we do. It's always good to eat food during the daytime when you're hungry, or in the nighttime when you're hungry, or when you're hungry, period. Uh, we'll probably get hungry today. Something that happens most days, every day. There we go, look at that. It almost looks like a fishing rod. Beauty. Well, you can catch you can catch trout right up to the top, so we'll just, we'll just do a good length of line here. Get our hook tied up, get some bait on. Use that number four, and you can put a good number. Make sure it's sharp, make sure it's sharp. Do it go on your nail like that, stick it on your nail. If it doesn't slide down your nail, it's sharp. It's always cool to see what's under the ice because you never know, especially on a, a new body of water when you're lost and you're just wandering around and you happen to find a lake out there, you know probably not too many other people have fished it. So it could be, it could be loaded with fish or it could be one of those lakes that are just not worth fishing and so nobody bothered to uh, find it. Big fat split shot because uh, that power bait will want to float up. We don't want to be on the, we don't want to be on the surface. Pretty shallow, maybe about four or five feet. We'll give it a try. If it doesn't work, we'll make another hole. It's part of fishing. Come on, survival, that's cool. Ooh, that was a bite right away. That scared me. <laughs> I don't know why it scared me, but it did. But <laughs> That was a fish right away. Well, I'm all, I'll, I don't want to. I don't want to lose it, so I don't want to grab it yet. Ugh. Did it let go? You guys hear that bell working? So these bells, they're cheapy bells. I think I got them from like an art craft supply store. It's super easy to get. I think they're like Christmas bells or something. But how it's rigged right now, you see how it's loose? It will work if the fish kind of lets go of it. But if the fish is taking it, it doesn't have the connection down to the piece of wood. So what I do is, you can see how many times I've tied it. So that's how many times I've gone fishing essentially because all I do after is I pull it off the branch and I throw the branch off in the woods. But what you want is you want it to be attached to the piece of wood so that when the fish grabs it, it has solid contact and then you hear that bell. I'll remember the sound of that bell forever because that is synonymous with a fish being on my line ice fishing. I've used them that long. I think these bells go back to, oh, maybe, I'm gonna date myself, 20 years or something like that, 25 years ago I started using these, and they, they stay with me in my fishing rig because it's a really simple, cheap way to go ice fishing. If not just survival fishing, you can catch, legitimately catch fish with just a really cheap set of gear. Oh, 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 there we go, there we go. Oh, it's a chub. We got ourselves a chub. There we go. Nice. Oh, you feel the weight of it there. Nope, let go. Ah, no, we still got our, we still got our power bait there. Very light bite, very, very, very light bite. Back again. I wanna wait for that bell to actually jiggle, then we'll know we have the, the fish on there proper. We got a fish, we got a fish, we got a fish, we got a fish. Oh, there we go. Oh, another chub. This is the freaking chub hole. I might have to move. It's getting ridiculous. Ah, they're huge chubs though, but it's just not, it's, they're so freaking bony. I don't want to eat a chub if I don't have to. <laughs> I can always come back and catch a chub by the sounds of things. They're super aggressive and they'll probably just keep hammering this. So I can always get like, you know, 15 chub. I'm not, get, I'm not being patient now. <laughs> do you feel it there or not? I do feel it. Ooh, I just saw a big freaking fish come up and grab it. 
I'm not joking either. That thing was a freaking monster. Oh no, come on. Oh, it's still there, still there, still there. Oh, I pulled it out. Dang it. Oh, 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 shoot. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> I told you there was a big fish down there. <laughs> That's why you tie your line up. <laughs> that thing went for a dive, man. All right, now I'm getting pumped. Okay, this is this has got to happen now. Got to get that. We got to get that bell so that it's rigged up right up against the line there. Nope, that was just falling. There we go. It's back. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There's something about fishing for your food that's different than just fishing. It's just, it matters more. It's more exciting when you know you're gonna go hungry if you don't catch a fish. It's everything, man. Go out there and fish for fun. You got food with you? Oh, 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 oh. But this, the food, the food's in the water here. And we gotta get it out or we don't eat. I've got like zero confidence on the hook setting right now. I like to just let it run more. But it's hard with these, you can't really let it run. It's like the weight's there, so then if the fish feels the weight, it wants to let go of it. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Ah, oh, it's a freaking another chub. This is the freaking chub lake. <sighs> Madness. I think we might be too shallow. We might, we might have to move. Oh, yeah. Well, the setup works. It's in the wrong spot. Come on, let's go, let's go. Oh, that's a big chub. <laughs> Let this guy go. I swear the other thing down there is something bigger. can't say we haven't had any action. Sometimes you go fishing and you don't catch anything. We got enough, enough fish here for fish soup. That's about it. I got a bite over here. Oh, there we do have a bite. Uh, I shouldn't be messing around with the camera, but here I am messing around with the camera. Sometimes that all, all five feet matters, man. Let's see. Come on, better fish. We're gonna get a second line set up here. Uh, dogwood, dogwood's good, but it's not, you don't, can't find dogwood everywhere. Um, I've had good luck just using cedar branches. Cedar branches you can find usually on the side of almost any lake. It's got a bend. You don't wanna get like a big thick branch unless you're planning and hoping to catch like big, big fish. Try another strand of dogwood, see if that doesn't work out. And uh, we'll get a second line in and see if we can't double our odds of getting the fish. Oh, we got him. Ah, got him. <laughs> this time, this time we got some food. Some actual food. <laughs> we got ourselves a trout. Beauty. Finally, we got some freaking food. Now this is actual proper food that people can eat. Like chubs, fish food. Oh, got a lower lip hook. There we go. Check it out. Nice. So after you get one thing in your survival thing and you got set up in the proper hole and everything like that, what you should be doing is not stopping at one. You should keep going until you have, well, until you're tired or you gotta get ready for shelter. So we're just gonna bonk this guy out. He's not gonna spoil or anything, obviously, because it's the right weather for that. We'll throw him out ice here. 
and we'll keep fishing as long as we can. We're gonna be mindful of how many hours we have left in the day because we don't wanna be stop, stuck exposed out here in the middle of nowhere out on the ice. We still have to think about what we're gonna do for our surviving, our shelter and whatnot. And I have some ideas in mind for that. So keep watching. We're gonna be doing something different. There might not even be a shelter involved this time. And that's the most likely scenario for a lot of people who are out trapped in the woods. They don't really have a survival shelter. They don't have the time to make one. So what is it that they're gonna do? I'll show you without many tools either. Get fishing, see how many more we can catch. Oh, there we go. That's a better fish. There we go. There we go. Yes. <laughs> ah, yes. We got a nice fish this time. He's a good one third bigger. Whew. That was a rush. I'm pretty sure I seen him come in and swipe it. He came in like a madman. There we go. Oh, hooked on the top of the lip perfectly. I don't know if I can eat more than two trout that size. Bonk this guy out. And get on to the next part of this adventure. When the fish does a quiver, he's dead. And the next thing you can do is just bleed him out. And I'll do that now, but uh, I'm not gonna show that. Beautiful trout. I know my hands are gonna get super cold cleaning these fish up. So we'll get that done because you never know if the weather changes or suddenly gets cold. But I know certainly once this uh, sun gets down, you know, my perspective on things are gonna start to get low and I get short on time. I know that I don't have to go and clean a fish because cleaning a fish is not super fun, especially in the winter when your hands are super cold and you're trying to do some pretty decent work because I'm not just going to throw this right on the flame. I got to be able to cook this uh, properly. That's one less thing I got to worry about when I start thinking about the next part of my life, <laughs> my surviving life. So we're going to get all these guts out and I'm going to try to make it as boneless as possible because that's the worst thing is when you got, you got it rigged up on the fire and you're trying to eat it and picking all those bones out. What you want to be able to do is basically just eat the entire fish that's what we're going to do here. Get the guts out and then I'm going to fillet on the inside. I'm going to take that, that rack of ribs out as best that I can. On a small fish, it's super tricky. Might as well get a little bit of water. It's going to be a lot easier to turn this into something drinkable than it will be to stick a bunch of snow in there and try to heat that up. But obviously this water is not good to drink at the moment. It's going to be, well, full of bacteria and nastiness. So we're gonna have to figure out how to purify this water so we don't get sick. And that's part of the challenge. We got food, we got water. Now we need some kind of shelter. And that's all part of survival. And I always think that, you know, we don't say fire. The fire should really be part of the survival challenge. But what the kicker is really is that um, you can't have drinkable water unless you have fire and that's the whole point of it. And you can't eat your food unless you have fire. So fire really is an integral part. We're not gonna camp out here on the lake. I got everything cleaned up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head back up into the woods <laughs> somehow. This is where it came in, sort of. Get back up in the bushes and we'll see if we can't find a place to make a more hospitable overnight spot. If I can get out of here. Oh, it's always hard to get out of the lake. I'll get up here and we gotta find a spot where we can make an overnight. Ay, ay, ay. All right, we gotta get out of the bushes here. It's enough of this. Whoa. Ish. Ah. Well, I'm not finding my way out of this madness, but such goes the survival challenge. You never quite get out of the forest the same day you make it in, hence survival. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of paying attention to the sun it's actually out today, which makes things a little bit more comfortable for us. I could keep headed toward that direction. That would be south. That might be get that might get me somewhere. But we're not getting out tonight. That's not part of the challenge. The challenge is making do. You might be wondering what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a place where there's gonna be enough wood that'll make it easy for me to make a fire because I don't have any tools besides my ax. So I wanna be in a place where there's gonna be enough deadfall that that could happen. 
and I am thinking about what kind, what I might do for a shelter. But as you know, I'm not planning on building a shelter. A shelter is expensive. And a lot of people ask me whether that's something I would do if I was really surviving. Would you have time? And what, what part of the day would you start to hunker down to make your shelter? And the answer is right away. If you actually want to make something decent. Today we're not making anything. Today we're going to do what I would actually do during a survival challenge. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit more about that later. I'm just looking around here for wood. I want to find a place where there's enough wood. There's enough deadfall stuff laying around that I can make a fire easily. And this looks like a pretty good spot. A decent fire lay here. You guys know how important fire lays are. Suffice it to say, you want to be up off the ground. Now, tinder is in short supply here. It always is in the winter. You can look for dry grasses. A few places over here, just behind me, there's a couple places where you can find some dried grass poking up, so some dried ferns. That stuff will light. But what I do is carry this very important thing in the winter. It's something that's super light and it's super duper effective. I've had this pouch in my pocket every winter for the last 10 years. I almost never use it because most of the time I can find birch bark, but you should still have it in case it's an emergency, in case you can't find birch bark, or in case you need to light a fire really, really quickly. That is cotton balls, simple cotton balls. Now cotton balls is considered a flash tinder. It's very, very dry, but what you can do is add Vaseline to that and then pack as much as you can into a small little cylinder. If you don't have one of these, this is an old, I think it's for needles. It's a little plastic canister, comes out. You can use anything really, a Zippo container, you can use an old pill bottle, uh, film canister, if you guys can manage to find any of those around. So I'm gonna start the fire today with this. This is gonna hold the heat a long time with the Vaseline. It almost works like a candle. So it holds a flame for a long time. We're gonna make sure we have a nice flat spot and we're gonna collect a lot of little sticks, little dry, high and dry, high and dry. So that's another rule you can think about too. You want those branches that are up off the ground because those are gonna be drying with the weather and the sun and they're gonna be out of the rain and off the elements, off the ground. The ground is really wet almost everywhere in the winter and we don't want that snuffing out our fire. We don't certainly want it snuffing out the beginnings of our fire. After a while, this will build up a nice coal bed. It'll insulate from the ground and then we can start building that fire nice and big. We're not gonna be relying today on fire for this survival challenge though. We're gonna be keeping warm another way. That's in the bag, but for now, we need to get our food ready and I'm not gonna start the fire until I have my fish prepared in such a way that it's ready to cook. Because you never know how long your fire is gonna last, how much wood you have, how much energy you have to spend on it. So we're gonna make sure everything's ready to go, including our water, because we have to get that to a boil, which is obviously going to be tricky. We are fast losing light. Now that we have most of our materials, I can show this stuff off. So we're gonna get a good hunk of it. I'm gonna kind of bury it inside what we already have here. I'm gonna get uh, probably two cotton balls. I think that, that'll be enough. I think we kind of lucked out as far as the materials that we have here. There's a big gob of it right there. And uh, the dry grass I think is pretty good. Uh, I didn't quite get anything ready as far as my tiny tinder goes <clears throat> because I want to make sure that I kind of bury it. I've got my two lighters on me right now too. Super, super old one. 
Okay, so we'll get that, that one's ready to go. And then we got big branches here. And this stuff is all, like we locked out, man. This stuff's super dry. Let's listen to those snap. Beautiful. So what we should be able to do is still be able to find that cotton ball down below here. And uh, maybe I'll bring you guys down here. You can have a look at this thing light and how it holds that, how it holds the heat. So come on down with me. I don't know if you guys can see how, how much that is actually holding that flame. It's doing all of the work for us right now. And it actually even might catch this on fire straight out of the gate. All right, so now we're in the awkward stage. <laughs> we're not teenagers, no. We're in the awkward stage of the fire. We got heat here. And we're going to do a careful fire at the beginning, which you should do anyway. Just feed sticks into the, into the flame, into the heat. That's the key, man. You guys can see just how easy it was to make that fire. And I don't know if you can see that flame right yet. It's not a big flame, but it's a super hot flame because it's complete combustion. I went to Texas and they said I made big fires. Well, you know what? If you don't make a big fire here in Canada, you're not going to have a fire at all. Snow around here is going to put your fire out. That's one of the hardest things for me to learn just through trial and error. When I was ice fishing, man, we had a hard time. We would cut like wet wood that we'd find along the banks of the, the, the lake. Try to burn that on the ice, because of course we wanted to ice fish. And if you haven't noticed, I got off the ice, and one of the main reasons is this, is because it's just completely impossible to get a decent fire going on the ice. The more heat you make, the more ice you melt, and then the ice turns into water, and it sits there in pools at the base of your fire. And so you get a better coals, you think, going, and then what happens, it turns into soup, and then that soup mixes in with all of your embers and puts it out. Now, if I was planning to use this fire for heat tonight, what I would not be doing, well, first I wouldn't be doing it here. I'm out in the open, kind of. Kind of out in the open. I mean, in the forest, but it's not a super sheltered, protected area. Is I wouldn't be grabbing the wood adjacent my fire. What I would be doing is spending my time hauling wood from the surrounding forest into this area so that I could easily grab it if it got dark and cold. You can see what a blazing fire we have, but I'm not going to stop here because at any moment in time this might tip over. I might develop enough liquid here. I have purposely made it on a slant so that the liquid will run off down here. And I found a place that it's it's uh, not going to be in a puddle or a low-lying depression. I want to keep it up and off the ground. But now, since I've used most of the wood just in this little vicinity here, I'll make a wider circle and start pulling some stuff in. And then we'll let this die down and get our fish on. I'm hungry and my water boiling. That's the most important thing right now to get that water boiling. And now is a good time to put it on too because it's hot. Oh, I'm really hoping that this works. I think it will. I'm not sure. So we've got our canteen here and I could just set it on the ground and hope it heats it, but all the heat rises and I've, I've done that before. It doesn't really work very well. So I'm hoping is I can cut this stick roughly to like a decent size. I gotta get it to fit through the lip, but but not come out at the same time. It's a test. Is that gonna fit in there? Yeah. And then the question is really, is it is it gonna come out? And so far, no. Okay, well that's good. Also it's bad, because <laughs> there was a documentary and they were trapping monkeys. Like primitive people were trapping monkeys. And what they did was they made a hole. <laughs> I feel just like the monkey right now. I literally can't get it out now. There was a, a monkey, monkeys, and what they did was they put um, treats or something. I forget what it was, some kind of food. They cut a hole into it and they, they put a bunch of, they jammed a bunch of, they made sure the monkeys were watching them and they jammed a bunch of food or something inside there. And the monkeys put their hand inside there and then they grabbed onto whatever was inside, like apples or treats or something. And then they really wanted to pull it out. <laughs> they pulled, tried to pull it out, but their hand was closed and they couldn't figure, they couldn't think. They weren't smart enough to just let go of what they had in their hand in order to pull their hand out. And so that's how they trapped the monkeys. As soon as I get this rigged up and I'm confident that we're gonna be able to get fire, fire, we're gonna get food. See, I'm already getting hungry. I actually knew I'm getting hungry. I haven't, I haven't drank, I drank all day. I'm feeling dehydrated now. Um, I haven't peed for a couple hours. That's, that's a problem. And you 
because you're breathing out of your mouth and the, the air is really dry, you actually lose water a lot faster. I'm gonna hang this over the fire. Hopefully it's the right height. If it's not, we can raise it and we can lower it somewhat. Did you like my stick idea? If I was smart, I probably would have made the fire over top of the cedar post already there, but hey, we've got the tools, you might as well do it. So now this shouldn't tip over now and it's already starting to steam, which is good news. I feel like the fire is a good intensity now. It's not too hot. And I'm not sure what you want to call that. Maybe you call it a monopod style. Just don't, don't make solutions for yourselves that are more complicated than they need to be. Like simple and elegant is the solutions that I like. It's just a loop over a branch propped up over sticks that happen to be in the way. Now they're useful. And that bottle's hanging perfectly right on top of that fire. Brilliant. Simple, elegant solutions. Anytime you uh, cook food, fish, whatever, I've got those both, both those fish set up so that the smoke is actually going into the fish and the heat too. And I just fasten them into the ground with a little bit of uh, snow. We gotta watch the sun. Let's see when it's gonna set. We gotta figure out what the next step is. They're surviving, they're thriving. That's the revival challenge. Think of a different name. That water just hit a boil. Beauty, we're gonna take it off because we're not gonna risk losing it. Full rolling boil makes water safe. You guys see that steam coming off of it? Once those bubbles turn big, we're good. So we're gonna let this cool off now. And we're gonna concentrate on our fish. I don't think our fish are in the perfect right position. So we're gonna re readjust those guys so that they cook properly. We don't wanna run on too long in the day. So let's get these adjusted. Cook nicely. Let's get the tops kind of angled in a little bit more. Water is way too hot to drink and we're losing sunlight. So now's about the time most people start to think about I'm in deep doo doo. Well, you can see how open the forest is in here. And you can see the type of materials we have to work with. Mixed cedar, it's pretty open. There's not a whole lot to work with. There's not even a lot of snow to really mound up and make something. So in my mind, I have an idea, but we gotta get packed up and go for a walk. So we're gonna find out my solution to staying overnight when you're lost and you don't have a shelter. That fish is cooking nicely. We don't have to worry about it. I don't, there's not any flame left. It's mostly just coal. We can't go too far away from it because we still have to make sure that it's not going to fall over or burn down or the fire go out. We won't have anything to eat. That's a big concern, but we got to get on with things. So I'm going to head into the bushes here and I'm looking around for something specific. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to get on a game trail. Not like a small game trail. I want to get on like a legit game trail. And I think I'm on one now because, well, I'm not running into things and that's what animals do. There's a couple of ravens. They were not too happy with me coming back in here. And I'm looking for deer pellets and deer prints because that will help guide me a little bit. Because animals are smart. They survive outside all year long. And they do that by using their wits about them. And one of the things that they do is they, they don't sit out in the middle of nowhere. This is kind of what I'm looking for here. We got a big, big spruce tree right here. And there's a indentation here underneath this tree that has my curiosity. Because, well, I think we found what we're looking for here. Let's see if we can't get up in nice and tight here. I'll show you. I'll show you what I'm looking at. To the naked eye, this might look like just more forest. But you see this big tree that's sticking up behind me here. You might not, in the wide angle lens, you might not realize how big it is. But for the trees that are in this vicinity here, it's a big tree. And if you look up above, 
That is a lot of overhead cover. In fact, that's more overhead cover than you could make if you made a shelter on your own. Even by cutting all these down and stacking them. We've done this before. We showed you how much work it was. But is it necessary? Well, if you're lost and you don't have the resources or the time, time is a resource when you're surviving, to make a shelter and you don't have the food to back it up and you don't plan on staying there a long time, this is what you're looking for. So what I'm sitting in is actually a deer bed. There's an indentation right here. See that little depression? There's a little depression right here. This is where an animal has been sleeping. I can't know for sure if it was a deer because I don't see any pellets here, but I do see something very interesting. I see coyote prints. Right here is a coyote. Coyote, 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 coyote. I might have startled a coyote out of this bed. When I was walking, I'm almost certain I heard something leave. So I could have easily bumped a coyote out of its bed right here. And it's been known that coyote and deer will use the same beds. A lot of times coyotes will actually roll themselves in, in uh, deer feces to cover and mask their scent. And so what we have here, we have a spot that lots of animals thought was a good place to sleep. And so guess what? This is a place that we can sleep too. It's like a ready-made shelter. So if it does start to rain or snow, then we're gonna be protected from the elements. Cleaned it all out, now we're set. You can see, animal decided uh, how it wanted to orient things because it can protect itself this way. It can sleep here and listen to anything approach and then it can exit this way or the other way if there's any danger approaching. Obviously the main exit we know now is this direction. So this could be the way the animal comes in too. We're gonna have to be careful tonight. We don't have a coyote coming here. So I got a few treats in here. I gotta tell you, it's, it's beautiful right in this spot. I could see why an animal would wanna stay here. I really can. It's like, it's isolated from the wind it's secluded, it feels private to me. Oh, let's pull these, pull these things out that I've been lugging around. I can get them out, they're in there pretty tightly. Oh, I had to squish them in. Okay, so this is probably item number two. This is a wool blanket. Everything I'm using right here is from arcturusgear.com, I think is the URL. Anyway, I'll put it down in the description and I'll pin a comment. Uh, they, they sent me these to test them. Uh, it's not a sponsor. They're not paying me to say anything about this stuff. And, and so I'm gonna give you my honest opinion. I can tell you this stuff is uh, deceivingly bigger than I thought it would be. It is very heavy duty. It is a significant wool blanket. And just a first inspection of the quality of this, this is something you could throw on your bed for sure. Okay, so the wool blanket, uh, I haven't decided how I'm gonna use this kit because I obviously have some options. So this is the Arcturus uh, Emergency Survival Blanket All Purpose. So it reflects heat, it's windproof, waterproof. This you should have in your car. Um, I don't know if you're gonna carry it around with you all the time if you're like fishing or whatnot, but this is something that you should keep around just generally speaking, put it in your truck, whatnot. So the question is, would you put this reflector on the ground or would you put the wool blanket on the ground? That's the, the million dollar question, right? There may be a way that I can devise it where I put the tarp on the ground, I wrap myself up in the wool blanket and then I pull the tarp over top so I have the best of both worlds and this ends up being like the best sleeping bag in the world. And actually, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna lay the plastic out on the ground. That's gonna protect me from moisture from down below. And then I can put the wool blanket down and then I can wrap the, other, the rest of the tarp over top. So let's get this set up here because that sun is hitting the top of the trees, which means we're just about out of light. Well, if you didn't have all that, you know what you would do? The same thing. You'd still come in here in a protected area You'd pull your hood up like this. You'd sleep in your snow pants. You would just lean up against a tree, slightly like this. You might have a little fire going, a little fire. I'm talking little, not a monstrous fire. A little tiny fire with lots of little twigs that you can add throughout the night. 
And to be honest, you probably wouldn't even do that. You're probably, what you're gonna do is you're gonna huddle up against a tree like this. Just in your snow pants, just like this, all night. And if you're lucky, you'd have a nice little fire that wasn't blowing smoke into your eyes. I'm gonna pull this up over here. We're gonna flip the bottom up. And then we're gonna flip the top up. Oh, that's actually pretty good. I'm in the coyote hole here. And so that's gonna keep me bundled up throughout the night. So I'm not gonna be sliding down the hill or anything. And I, I gotta be honest, I feel warm. I actually do feel warm. So I'm gonna get back. We're gonna go grab our fish. And we're gonna watch that sunset right here. We gotta get settled in. We don't wanna be wandering around in the forest in the dark. So let's go get our food. I love this. This works really good. And the most important part about it is dry. Like I can be comfortable and dry. I'm not getting my feet wet. I'm not getting my body wet. The tarp is protecting me from the elements. And I didn't have to wrestle with a bunch of trees for the entire day to get this thing done. Whew, we are in this water, I'll tell you what. Get that. Get that stick out of there. All right, let's have a swig. Ah. A little smoky, not too bad. Ah, that's water, and I gotta drink a lot of it. I'm dehydrated like mad. All right, that's good. That's water check mark. The fish looks really good. We can grab those, head back to the shelter and hunker down. Just take our paracord. We can use that for later if we need to. Let me get loaded up, get the lid on here. Take our fish, not perfectly cooked. I'm busy with the water, making sure the water is good and far going. I have to come over here, tend to this, because this is a, a way. It's a ways from where I made the fire on purpose, kind of. Because, well, obviously we went over there and we were, we were supposed to make an impromptu sleeping quarters, and that's kind of what we did. If I'm doing like a survival, if I'm doing real survival, this is all I'm doing. I'm not making a shelter. A shelter is something, it's a luxury, put it that way, in survival, or survival challenge. It's not something that you're gonna do every time to go out and build a shelter. It's just too expensive to do it that way. It costs too much time. It's a lot of labor. It's a lot of calories, a lot of energy. If you're really gonna survive the night, you're probably just gonna go up against the tree, just like I'm doing. And a lot of people have survived the night just by doing that exact same thing. They, they hunker down. They might have made themselves a little fire, but they didn't go out all out and build a giant shelter that's for us that's for fun that's to see if we can do it you know we want to hit, tick off all the boxes that you would do if you were say to start over again from scratch outside of civilization you'd want to have a, a, like a long-term shelter and that's kind of the image that we have in our minds as far as what shelters go i'm going to eat the best part of the trout up on the, on the shoulder and we're going to get up in the brain and all that good stuff man i still have one whole trout left to go so this fish basket is kind of cool. It's, a, it's just made out of dogwood and uh, wrapped together. This one I ended up using a little bit of, of trap wire because um, it wasn't holding together as nicely as I wanted to. So I used a couple strands of trap wire. It's been a long time since I've eaten a fish brain. Hmm. Fatty goodness. There's that little eyeball that that's not edible, but the rest of it's edible and incredible. Mm. No, I'm not worried about coyote. Coyote wants to come and eat me. I'm gonna stick it in the face with the ax. I was gonna say, it can have me. <laughs> I don't want a coyote to have me. <laughs> Just use the ax and whack it in the face. And then I'll eat the coyote. You know me, I'll eat anything. Put your hands out and you got, you know, four fingers left. That's a half an hour till sunset. And then you got another half an hour to kind of get things situated before you got no light at all. Depending of course on what's going on with the sky. If it's overcast, cloudy, or you got a full moon. With the remaining hour we have or so left, not only am I gonna eat this whole fish, I'm not gonna save anything. It'll be frozen solid by morning. But what I do wanna do 
is actually tr try my best to dry everything that I have on. I want to get the cuffs of my boots are pretty wet. That's what I want to get out the most right now. I'm going to be getting up and running around. I already feel warmer just getting up. In a real survival scenario, it's the calories that are on your body that are really going to keep you going. Finding food, making shelter, water, of course, 100% is a must. But the other things, they're, they're kind of luxury items. That's why that's not really a, I don't, it's not really a survival challenge. It's more like a thriving challenge. And uh, hopefully I've been able to show that to you. It's good meat, really good. I have a lantern, I have the O lantern here, so that'll be the only thing that keeps me company tonight. <laughs> Except for the coyotes. <laughs> hopefully they don't want to come back here in bed in the morning. But, uh, well, we have a little bit of light left. I wanted to uh, have a little chat. Seems like winter's the time to do the chats with you guys. So it's, uh, this year's been garbage. I mean, it's been fine for me. Um, hopefully it's been fine for you, but in the grand scheme of things, this has been a pretty garbage year. Uh, with the lockdowns and everything, I don't know what they're like where you are in the, in the US. It seems like they're not going as heavy as they are here in Ontario. It's been a disaster. And uh, I hope we can actually come back to some level of normalcy at some point. It hasn't affected me a whole lot. I've always been able to find a loophole. In fact, filming is a loophole. We're allowed to still produce media. And so I can still do all the things I need to do. But my son's lost hockey completely. He's not allowed to visit his friends currently. I don't want this to be a, ti a time timely segment. I want this to be something that, you know, if you watch it three years from now, you can relate to it. Hopefully things are better by then. It doesn't apply as much. And we've got through this little rough patch in society. I hope, I hope that's what I hope. You know, if you're watching this three years from now, just I want you to think about, um, you know, have your, having your systems in place. This year, a lot of the systems that we have, you know, the school system, a hockey system, they've all disintegrated on us. And we don't have organized school. We don't have organized hockey all the time. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. And I'm not talking about making the most of it. What I'm talking about is having those systems in place that you're not relying on somebody else to provide those things for you. So early on in the, in the lockdowns and the pandemic and all that stuff, I talked to my wife and I said, this is permanent. I said, even if it's not permanent, let's look at it like it's permanent. And I don't want you to be wasting the next month because they had locked schools down. I don't want, don't waste the next month waiting for things to get better. Make things better now. Take advantage of it. And you might have this in, in your life with uh, illness or a divorce or just to change a, a loss of job, whatever. It could be anything. And so what you want to do is don't let it become permanent. Instead, use it as a motivator to make things better. And that, you know, parallels with the survival challenge. You could sit there and you can mope and you can hope that somebody, something's going to come and somebody's going to come and save you and something's going to make something better for you. But you know what? It's just easier and quicker if you do that yourself. And uh, you might be surprised on what you can accomplish as far as like fixing your system. So the school system, what we did was we, uh, we got together with another family who's actually close friends with my son and we made sure that they could still hang out together and even do school together uh, while it was legal to do so. But the point is, is that you need to figure out how to get your systems up and running. So you should have that fallback. And uh, the hockey system was another one that I knew straight away, okay, there's no way this hockey thing's gonna fly, not for the long term. So what are we gonna do? And uh, having the pond at my brother's house has really helped out because he could keep up with his hockey. And uh, Holland's been doing stick handling too. We, we got him, uh, uh, it's a slippery surface so he could still keep on doing that. And he's been uh, doing his squats. Uh, he does squats for speed and deadlift. And so we've kept up with that. Not at the same pace as if the season was on. And like, trust me, I'm not drilling him. He does it if he wants to do it. Uh, but he does, he just really want to keep up with the speed. He likes being fast. And so that's something that, you know, takes, you know, three or four minutes every day. Uh, he does four sets of 20 and he's done. And uh, that provides him with all the speed that he needs. But that's something that obviously we have to provide that you know the broader, the broader world can't provide for us right now. I'd like to be able to travel a little bit more. We have plans with Bob Hanser. He invited me up to, uh, I'm gonna say South Texas, but not, it's West Texas, up in the Davis Mountains. He wants me to head up there. And Zach, you know, I wanna get together with Zach 
Fowler forever. He wanted to come up here. I'm like, dude, you can't come up here. We can't even, you'd have to quarantine for two weeks before I could even see you. Anyway, I wanted to, I wanted to have that conversation with you guys. I've been looking for a time and that was the best time. We got a little bit of light left and pretty soon it's gonna be dark and we're gonna hunker down and I don't have a fire to talk by. So we'll call this the lantern slide chat. <laughs> Sponsored by Olight. Well, it's not really sponsored by Olight at all. It's just, uh, you know, it's a cool light, isn't it? <laughs> Starting to get dark here and we're gonna get settled in. Trying to find the low, the lowest spot here because I know I'm gonna end up there anyway. kind of half wish I wasn't right on the deer bed because <laughs> I don't know how they do it. They're just loaded with fat or what? <laughs> but it's like, it's, oh, right, they're a different shape than a human. <laughs> if I roll up in a ball like a deer, it's probably a lot more comfortable than <laughs> trying to lay through it like a human <laughs> with legs and arms. But if I get my torso like right in the, the deer spot, I think I'll be all right. Okay, well that's off. That's good. I'm I'm like right in the I'm right in the ball of the bed. Coyote or deer or whatever the heck I'm sleeping in right now. Ain't half bad. It's comfy. It's keeping me warm right now. I like it. It's a good thing to have. And again, they're not paying me to say anything special about it. It's just I asked them for it since they gave me that camo. You know the crow hunt I did with the camel they gave me that too and uh, I like that really a lot and they gave me a leafy suit um, for hunting so hopefully I'll be able to use that for turkey good night catch you in the morning maybe <laughs> oh, good morning, guys. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> that really sucked. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, the sun's about to come up. Ouch. <laughs> Is this going to fit back in my bag? Well, if you guys watch the whole video, right full stop, you can subscribe or not. I don't care if you subscribe, but I really do appreciate having you guys along. Catch you in the next one. Ah!